There is one reason that corn and glass products have been in American kitchens for more than 160 years. They're guaranteed not to break. Until Corning invented Corel Livingware, no dishes that were so much like China could take everyday pounding. The New York manufacturer sold off some of its better-known lines, like Pyrex in the 1990s, and started making most of its remaining products overseas. But Emma Jacobs reports it is one company that's doing well by reinventing itself while still making some of the toughest glass in the world. The shift change whistle still sounds four times a day in Corning, New York. Though these days the whistle mostly reminds Corning Incorporated's office workers and researchers that it's time for lunch, since almost all manufacturing is done elsewhere. Jim Flaws, the company's CFO, works out of the firm's Soaring Glass headquarters. He still has a lot of the old Corning cookware in his basement from his days in housewares. But he says even Corningware was a product of the company's longtime investments in research in Corning. We spent money on R&D, and the people at the top of the company would talk about it almost as if it was a religion. So we'll hit the drop button. Don Clark works in a lab that runs performance tests on the company's latest rising star, super thin, tough Gorilla Glass. Clark has a particular demonstration he likes to show off. He's rigged up a device to shoot a Wii, that's the game remote, into a pane of Gorilla Glass. The Wii hits at around 60 miles an hour. Hopefully this doesn't break, but here it goes. Yeah. And it bounces right off. Demonstrations like this one seem to have convinced manufacturers of everything from cell phones to televisions. Gorilla Glass was on some 200 million phones last year. And though managers at Corning coyly say they can't confirm what Apple uses in its products, it's widely reported that much of that Gorilla Glass went to iPhones. This year, Gorilla Glass sales could reach a billion dollars. That's almost a sixth of Corning's total sales last year. My iPhone was actually run over, and although the back of the case was really kind of pitted from being run over, the glass itself did not break. Not every iPhone owner is so lucky, but Jim Kelleher of Argus Research says there's no doubt Corning's glass lines are strong. Corning has had bubbles burst before, but this time he says the company has not just Gorilla Glass, but other products too that come out of solid research that meets companies' needs. And while a lot of glass production happens overseas, 40% of Corning's employees are still in the U.S. The company's CFO, Jim Flaws, who got his start in dishes, says there are no plans to move the R&D operation from home. He says the benefits of having Corning's technical resources concentrated here outweigh any costs. Even in a downturn, he says, We didn't cut back on the research and development because we view that as really our future. Corning makes ceramic filters in upstate New York, and the company's expanding its onshore operation in Harrodsburg, Kentucky, to make more Gorilla Glass. Corning has also begun testing in Kentucky on what it hopes will be its next big advance. Glass so thin and so flexible, it will be rolled up and sold on spools. For NPR News, I'm Emma Jacobs.